to make an iOS app, first we need to learn its programming language, which is Swift. My goal with this video is to give a beginner a quick and clear introduction to the basics of the code because in the upcoming videos we're going to be coding up a lot of different iOS apps so it's really important that you understand the fundamentals. I'll show you from the very beginning so even if you've never coded before in your life this is your chance to jump in and start now. In Xcode let's create a new project so we'll create this app and I'm gonna call it Swift Beginner Tutorial and let's not include test. I'm gonna keep this real simple. So you can see the default app here. Now I'm actually going to open up the simulator, iPhone 15 Pro, and let's run this app. Cool, so I'm going to keep this as simple as possible and start with the Swift programming basics. Now you can see that there's some default code already and this is how we create the UI for the app. And so you can see here every screen needs a body to display some things. So you can see there's an image and a text. But let's delete all of this so that we can just start completely from scratch. And let's just start with a basic text saying Swift Beginner Tutorial. And then click the play button to just run the app again and it will rebuild and there it is. Awesome. Let's delete the code of the preview as well and let's keep this very minimal. So let's start from the very beginning with variables. So for example, we can say a variable my age is 29. We can also have constants which we use the keyword let. So we could say let my name be Steve Jobs. Now one of the most fundamental things that we need to know about variables is the types. So we could say an age is an integer. Now, if you look at our very first line of code, if you don't specify that it's an integer, then the code will automatically infer that it is an integer. But you can also just explicitly specify it here like this. And so we have an integer, we have a string, we have a double, which is like decimals, and then we have a Boolean, which is true or false values. So just to connect this back to our iOS app, let's say on the text, we can give it my name. And if I rerun it, then yay, we can say Steve Jobs. One thing I wanna show you here is if I want to display my age, you can see it's got some error here because the type of my age is an integer where we should probably give it a string since it's a text, right? So what you can do is just wrap it in a string to convert it. Then it will display my age properly. So this brings us on to the next concept, which is we have all these types. So let's do some type conversions. For example, if I have a number, which is 42, then this will automatically infer that it's an integer. But let's say I want to change this to a double. Right, like a decimal number. And we can also change it to a string. And so type conversions in Swift are really easy like this. So just to show you again, if I want to display the text of the number, it's not gonna work because it's an integer, but the text requires a string. Now, one thing is how do I know a text requires a string? Well, you can try option plus click on this for more info. So it'll pop up this information here. So it's kind of like the documentation and it'll tell you how all of this works. So again, if I say number, because it's an integer, it's not gonna work. We need to give it the string. And if I rebuild this, then yes, we've got the number. Awesome, and maybe we could make the font size a bit bigger. Cool, so let's come back to our programming. And the next thing we wanna learn is about these strings. And one operation we can do for strings is something called concatenation. Say we have a first name, Mitch, and then we have a last name, Coco. Then we can say full name is first name plus last name. That's what concatenation is. It's just adding strings together. So if I try to display this text of full name, you can see that there it is, Mitch Coco. The next operation for strings is called interpolation. And what that means is we can just include certain variables inside a string. So for example, if I have a message saying, I am 29 years old. Now, if I wanna use that my age variable, if I just type my age, then that's not gonna work. We have to say 
backslash and open up these brackets and then include the variable. Yeah, so I am my age years old. So if I rebuild this app, you can say I am 29 years old. And so that's an example of interpolation. And then we have some basic methods. So we got like the, we can get the length of the string. Awesome, now let's move on to the next concept, which is math operators. So starting with the arithmetic, if you did any math at school, then you would know about add, subtract, multiply, which we use with the asterisk sign, and divide, which we use with a slash symbol. And it's also useful to know also just this percent sign, which is for remainder, right? So how do we actually put this in action? We could say, let result equal to one plus one, and let's try to display the result. And whoops, there's an error because this is an integer. So let's wrap this in a string. Cool, so one plus one, obviously the result is two. And so you can use this to play around with the operators and see how the math works out. Beautiful, so that's the arithmetic. And then we have the comparison operators. So the first one is about equality, like one equals to one is true. Then we have inequality, right? Like one does not equal to two, that will return true. Then we got the smaller than and greater than, this type of comparison operators. So for example, let's say outcome equals to my age is greater than 18. Sweet. So with these sort of basic operators, we can manipulate all of these data types around. And then again, another fundamental concept in programming is functions. So let me show you how to start with a really simple function saying do something. And let's just print hello world. So what I'm going to do is down here, let's get rid of this text and let's just include a very basic button. And when I click on this button, let's say execute that function. Awesome. So if I rebuild this, you can see there's the press me button. And if I click on it in my little console down here, you can see it's printing hello world. So it's like executing a bit of code. And maybe let's make the foreground color white so that we can see this a bit better. Now you can also have a function with a return value. Let's say we have this function called hello world. We're going to return a string, right? Then we actually have to use a return keyword and then we can return the string. So how does this actually play out? Well, coming back to our button down here, instead of clicking a button to just execute some code, we can come back to our text widget and just call that function hello world. And if I rebuild it, then you can see it's just going to print the hello world, right? So the first thing is a button, which we can click to just execute some code down here. And then we've got the text widget, which if I call hello world function, it doesn't just execute code, it actually returns something, right? It's returning a string. So that's what it means to have a return value. The next idea is having a function with a parameter, meaning let's say we have a function saying greet human, we can accept a parameter for the name. So we can create this function and say, depending on the person's name, right? We can say like return, hello, whoever, right? So let's come back down here to the text and say greet human and give it the name, Mitch. And then if I rebuild this, you can say, it will say hello, Mitch. So just whatever the parameter is. So we can continue this idea and have multiple parameters like name and age, right? We could say, hello, Mitch, you are 29 years old. And let's just comment the button out for now. Hello, Mitch, you are 29 years old. So that's how you do multiple parameters. And just to show you another simple example, you can have a math version, right? Add two numbers and you could accept two parameters and return the sum. So now that you know how functions work, the next idea is control flow. So the very first concept is an if else statement, right? So let's say I have a function just to check an age and then we can execute some code here and say if age is greater or equal to 18, then let's print you are an adult. 
else you are a child. Cool, so let's come back down here and let's bring back our button. And when I click this button, let's check the age. And so of course in the parameter, we could just specify an actual number like 20 or 30, but we can actually just give it our variable my age from the very beginning of this tutorial, which is 29. So if I rebuild this, I click on the button, it's going to check the age and then it's going to tell me you are an adult. Nice. Now, if you find yourself writing too many if statements, like it gets really, really long, like in this example, you can use a switch statement. So in some situations, this might be better where there's just like so many options. So instead of writing a bunch of if else statements, you can just write these different cases. Right, so this get day name function, we could try to execute it down here. And so if I just say one, then it should print Monday. So just depending on our parameter and all of these different cases. Beautiful, and the next thing is loops. Now there's different types of loops, but the one I'm gonna show you in this video is a for loop. Here's a very basic for loop that counts to five. We can say for i in one through five, let's print the i. So what it's gonna do is just gonna go through all the numbers one through five and print it like this. And then for the collections, which is another way of saying data structure. The one I'm going to teach you here is the most fundamental one, which is an array, which you can think of as just basically a list of items. So let's say we have like a shopping cart of apple and banana. And just to show you some array operations, let's relate this back to the for loop that we just learned. You can say for item in cart, print item. And so this will go through and print each item. So Previously, we looked at a kind of math version of the for loop, but we can also apply it to all of these different situations in arrays and stuff like that. So just to show you this print cart, if I give it to my button and I run the code, press me, and then it'll cycle through each item in the cart and just print it out. Some other cool things you can do with arrays is you could say the number of items, just access by saying cart.count. And if you want to access individual items in the array, you can use an index. So the first item is cart zero. Second item is cart one. Let's say we have a third item, orange. Then that will be cart two. So that's how the indexes work for you to access each item. And maybe I'll also show you the appending and remove. So you can append, which just means like add it on. We can add on a strawberry and it looks like these variables were never used. So that's fair enough. Then let's just comment this out for now. So we can append, we can also just remove and you can see all of these different options that you've got. So I want you to just play around with this, but that's how we can use arrays. And then finally we have this idea called structures in Swift which if you come from another programming language, it's a very simple version of a class, which I'll explain in a future video. But just to keep this simple, let's just start off with a struct. We can create like a person. And let's say the person has a name and an age. And you can use this to kind of have a template and you can create different people. For example, like person one is the person and we can give Mitch age 29. I can have person two and say Steve and his age is 50. So we can create different people and different objects like this. And so just coming back to our iOS app, you can have a text widget, go to that person's name and access all the different properties regarding that person. Inside the struct, you can also have a function that relates to this object. So I could say a function called get bio. And if we call this function, then let's print this person's information. So if I come to my button and go to my person, then let's say get buyer, I rebuild, 
press the button and sweet there's our message